She slams on my desk with a squishy sound. Her soap clothes are making the desk and everything on it wet, but she doesn't care. Okay, fine, I'll help you out. I have a towel somewhere. Do you want dry clothes? Is in uniform fine? I'm taller than you, but... Everything is fine. With a little searching, I find a fresh uniform and a fluffy towel from the depths of my closet. The towel in one hand and the uniform in the other, I turn to face Rin again, uncertain of the next step. There is something wrong with me. I'm not... Skip, then. There's something wrong with me. A normal guy would just... Something wrong with me. A normal guy would just... Stop worrying. It's not a problem. She could probably see right through my hesitant demeanor. As if I was completely transparent to her. I push my anxiety away and concentrate on the eight buttons lined on her shirt, just like mine has. The only first button is an obstacle, and after getting it over, and undo the others with slightly less shaking hands. This is okay? I guess it's okay. Throwing the soaked shirt aside, I reveal Rin's pale upper body, shrouded only in her light blue brassiere, which instantly reminds me of her saying it's her favourite colour. I try not to think too much about it. Stuff, but it's hard not to look at her body with what I can only think of as mixed feelings. I don't know what to think of it, of this, so I just watch her. Rin looks brittle. She's like a shell, a fragile thing just barely holding together. This is the love music. Her ribs, each of them visible under her pale skin, are moving up and down in the rhythm of her breaths. Rin always struck me as quite thin, but I realize now that the, man the manic creative period before the exhibit opening must might have caused her to lose weight. Did she eat properly enough? And enough? Despite not, despite, definitely not, and probably not. This ugly yet beautiful bare minimum of a human body that belongs to someone I care about is a contradiction of aesthetics in itself, oddly becoming of her. My eyes follow her collarbone to her shoulder and down her arm until the abrupt end. No, it's less than the bare minimum. I think of a passing pang of sadness and some guilt for thinking that. <laughs> Zooming in on them breasties. Fucking mouse. Sorry, I keep forgetting. Her arms degenerated into almost nothing but bone and skin due to the lack of use. Look very short now that the long sleeve of her uniforms are not covering them. They're not there, you know. My lack of any negative reaction makes me think that I've actually grown pretty accustomed to the various physical abnormalities of my schoolmates. I always wondered why Rin keeps her shirt sleeves long, only trying them in a simple knot as to where the elbow would be. It seems a bit impractical, but then again, she's not exactly the pinnacle of practicality. Maybe she likes it. Maybe it's somehow important to her. Maybe there's no deeper meaning to it. I feel like asking, and almost do, but Rin's miserable state requires a higher... <coughs> pardon. Priority of my attention. I think I'm just going to keep going for this. I'm, always for now. I'm, just, I'm at half an hour now, so I'll just keep going. She stopped talking too. After we ran out of spiky greetings. I guess there's no need for chit-chat then. I pick up the towel from the bed and wrap it around her head, rumpling it all over her hair until most of the rainwater is hopefully stoked, soaked, stoked, soaked into the fabric. She peeks from below the towel at me, looking up with impassive eyes. It looks like she wants to say something without saying it. It's that kind of a look. But I can't read what she's thinking about from her face, so I just keep on fussing with the towel around her shoulders and hair. The silence is oppressive, terrifying. Communication between us has suddenly become been reduced to the movements of my hands in the towel, and Rin swaying her body to and fro. My jagged breath and her quiet bra breaths, briefs, briefs, got a lot of briefs, trying to find a common rhythm that just is not there. I I think I can hear her heartbeats, or maybe heart her heart her heartbeats, her heartbeats, many heartbeats, plenty of heartbeats, beep beats, or maybe they are just mine redoubled. As I brush a robe strand of hair aside from her ear, Rin suddenly presses her cheek against the back of my hand. The contact is electric, a jolt of current surging through me. Whether she seeks comfort, warmth, or just my touch, I wouldn't know, but I can't help touching her back, caressing her soft cheek with my hand. And with, with closed eyes, she kisses me on the fingers, counting the joints of her lips. Hmm. I'm saddened beyond my expressive capability. Here we are, a boy and a girl, both in love, or something like that, with each other, or maybe not, and yet... Something is broken. I can feel it in me and in Rin, in the way our gazes merely brush against each other, shying away from contact in her closed, timid posture and in my way of touching her like a china doll, afraid of shattering her delicate form. In how we are closer than we have ever been, yet I'm not feeling happy, 
It's like yesterday. When did tenderness and forlorn for forlornness become one and the same word? Acts of affection start evoking only longing. How did we end up like this? No, don't answer that. I like to say to myself, but fighting against the omnis omniscience of se uh, omnip om omniscience of self awareness is a lost cause. Still, I am here, and Rin is here, and it feels like she might be able to solve whatever problem she has. And if she can, why couldn't I? Why couldn't we? It feels like taking this step is too much, too difficult, too uncertain. So for now, all I can do is dry her up so she won't get a cold again. I pet her head, trying to sort out the hair that she refuses to be sorted out even when wet. Oh my god. I'm getting that neck boner again. A pair of dark, glazed eyes felt follows my every movement. Pants too? She nods, and Ansa leans back and spreads her legs with a grotesquely inviting gesture. <laughs> That makes me a nasty feeling crawl up and down the spine like a bad premonition. It's not enough to sober me, though, as the silence is starting to make me feel detached from myself. I move automatically without thinking, even though I should. I should talk to her about this, or at least set about something. The silence is a spell, a pact that has bound us to this private world made of the dull sound of rainfall, and there's the soft feel of her skin against my fingers. The button of her trousers is fastened tight, but it opens surprisingly easily. Slipping them off is hard, mostly because she's sitting on them, with no intention of standing up to ease my task. Which looks amazingly feminine there. I kneel down uncomfortably and titillatingly between her legs so I can quickly dry her bare feet, remembering that they are as important to her as, my, as hands are to me. As I work the towel up from her ankles, Rin brushes her thigh against my cheek and nudges the small of my back with her heel to make me come closer. I look up to meet her silent stare that she was waiting for me to look up. That was waiting for me to look up. That unassuming, expectant stare seems to stay that, say that the ball is in my court. I fleetingly brush my hand against her inner thigh. The touch makes her gasp sharply, as if she was trying to hold back breathing. What if I do this then? What if I do this then? The small kiss I place on her thigh is enough to make Rin lose her composure. To shut her eyes, to squeal in almost inaudibly. Is that what you want to? Is that what you want to? Would it be alright now? To take this step? What if... Maybe if... <laughs> hmm. Hazy for I think most guys now would have, uh, would have... Would have... Would have... Would have stopped thinking with their brain. Hazy thoughts float somewhere in the back of my unfocused mind. Somehow this whole situation is making it hard to think, as if my head was full of cotton fluff. But that's alright. It seems thinking is not something we need right now. By the ga by the grace of vastly smaller am- Oh, and now she is nuded in her vagines out. By the grace of very small amounts of fabric, slipping off Rin's panties is considerably easier than her, small than her trousers. They disappear past my field of vision, sliding somewhere way away down her legs. It seems I did a poor job with the towel, since Rin's legs are still wet from the rain. Well, whatever. <laughs> oh, okay, he's, uh, <laughs> he just shoved his face straight in there, Jesus fucking Christ. <laughs> Guided by my instinct more than rationality, I move closer and taste the different kind of wetness. Okay. She responds to me. It's the slow movements of my tongue. On her skin, to my kisses on her flesh. Her muscles tense and relax in the rhythm, as if what I'm doing now, doing was uncomfortable. To hear Rin try not to make a sound when I suck on her. Oh, this doesn't sound right. Is unreal. This whole morning has been so unreal. Like the surreal intangibility of an awakening dream. I can't believe I'm doing this to her now. I'm going with the flow. <laughs> you sure are. Besides, the point of no return was a thousand miles ago. I move around, try to do things to help to her, to find the places where her weaknesses lies, to tease her, to drive her mad with pleasure because I want to. I want to do this to her. But she doesn't squeal, she doesn't squirm, for maybe I can't make Rin any madder than she already is. Whatever I do. Oh shit, what did I do then? I pressed Windows. <laughs> Her ragged, heavy breathing mixed with unintelligible moans is that of a lunatic, but I do not cause it. I only release that from her. She becomes more and more moist, and I drink from- <laughs> Oh my god, I'm sorry! Oh, it's just- oh, it's too much. It's too much. Oh, it's- 
That's not even attractive. I drink from her. <laughs> With a nice Chianti. Feeling a heat growing inside myself. I drink from her. Oh my god. That is... That is a sentence that I would never have thought I'd have to say. <laughs> drink from her. Vagina chalice. I try to reach her deepest places, to feel all of her I can this way. My every action is met with a different reaction, but all of those are out of pure lust. Rin is lost in desire, willing to let anything happen to her if I do it right now. Ow. She becomes closer and closer to the moment of release, but the way to that is an uphill slope of madness. Still, she is going that way. Might want to move your face, dude. The muscles don't relax anymore between the waves of ecstatic spasms. Rin just becomes tenser and tenser, contracting so much that it must be physically painful, but I do not let go. I keep going, and I know she wants it too. She desperately wants me to do this to her. <laughs> she she does, she wants it, she loves it, she's loving it, she wants it. A leg curls around my shoulder and draws me closer, so close that I think I'm going to choke. <laughs> there we go, that would a hell of a way to go. Choked by Rin's vagina. I keep going because it's the only possibility. As I push the buttons that drive her into gasping for breath, locking her leg into a cramp against my back, losing her mind in the sensation, at that precise moment I seem to forget all that was meant to be, all that should be. All I know is that she came here and I think there was a towel at some point too. None of that matters. All that matters is this, what we have now. Her orgasm surges through me too, exciting me in a completely new way. <laughs> My face. In my fucking face. Makes me feel anxious, nervous, bothered. As her body relaxes, I try to kiss her down there again, but it startles her, causes her to jump. No, it's so enough. Come here. I stand up to remove the last piece of clothing Rin has. She leans against me to catch her breath, tickling me with warm air exhaled into my shirt. Blindly, I reach behind her back to feel my way below her shoulder blades to find the contraption that fastens her bra. It opens more easily than I thought. Falling to the floor somewhere. Her bare skin against me is a sensation so wonderful that I want to have more of it. And I do, embracing her. Rin's hair smells of rain, and I realise that I'm not the hearing the sound of rainfall anymore. You've gone deaf. You're blind now. Just let the poop go to work. It's a sobering thing. The cushion that enveloped us into reality of our own is now gone, and I realize more clearly what is happening. You know, this really is not what friends should be doing. I whisper once again, this is really not what friends should be doing. <laughs> Noticing how such a simple matter as talking can be overbearingly difficult at times. Will you stop being my friend? That wasn't what I meant, but a serious tone in the layers of contortions behind Rin's question give me pause. Nah. I think it might be alright, even if you did. I hug her and smile into her hair, understanding Rin perfectly for once. You are wet. The remnants of water on her skin have drained under my shirt, into my shirt. Does she mean like, that might be my, stop being my friend and be more? I think that's what she means there. Somehow, even her statements of the obvious make me glad right now. You're right, I am, but it's your fault. I want to see you. I want to see you. <laughs> this them, them fucking Velcro tops, man. They're so good. I comply, standing back to the buttons of my shirt, much more quickly than when I undid Rin's buttons. A sudden sense of haste strikes me, spurring me to rush forward. Every second I'm not touching Rin, it's a second wasted, a chance lost. My belt buckle proves an obstacle, despite my ability to open it in an eye blink under normal, normal circumstances. When I fumble with it, I don't notice Rin bringing her foot up between us until she starts tracing my chest with her toe. <laughs> Whoa, how the fu- Jesus, so, if they're that close, right? He's like, the foot's fuck- what the fuck? The foot's like, fucking, like- <laughs> What the fuck? <laughs> Damn, girl! She got that flexibility! Rin bringing her foot between us. I look down to see what she's looking at. My heart. I reflectively flinch back, covering the scar tissue in the middle of my chest. The shallow mark the surgery following my heart attack left on my body has healed already, but... Well, it's not a particularly pretty sight, if not overly repulsive, either. 
It's barely noticeable, but she does have an eye for details. Is that why she said she wanted to see me? I'd sort of forgotten about this, because of all this mess with Rin. But now all the unpleasant things connected to my condition surface at once, rushing from my mind like a flash flood. Uh, and oh god, all the stories about old guys getting heart attacks and having sex. What if... So? Realising that I might have spoiled the mood, I stumbled to explain myself. Ah, sorry, it's just that... Let me touch you. Let me touch you? <laughs> Her eyes are sultry, inviting as she sits there bare naked without an inkling of shame. I never thought Rain could be could look like that. Yeah, I know this is not how it should go. Even though Rain is right here, even though there should be no more questions, no obstacles, not this maddening feeling that this something is constantly wrong. The same feeling that clutched my heart yesterday makes its appearance. We are together in a way that is difficult to define. It eludes description as stubbornly as it evades change. Would a relationship like this be alright? Could we ever change to become closer? Even though we would stay together for all eternity, we might never find our mutual understanding. But there is no such thing as eternity. This may mean that we will not be together forever. If not our differences, then the flow of time will pull us apart with irresistible force. Rin is a creature of the moment, of whim, and of impulse. I am nothing of the sort. This is a fact that I can understand very clearly. If for no other reason, for this for, 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 reason, for this reason I should grasp this moment, even if it's the only moment we will ever have. I should not let myself spoil it. Even if I can't escape myself, Rin can't either. I know it now. We both have things we can't let go. Things we cannot think. We can't, we can't not think. Feelings we, can, we can't not feel. But she allows herself to want me without any restraint, here and now. I'm sorry, you know. If so, you really have to stop worrying. Rin interrupts me before I get further, which is good, because I don't know what I could have said. Her voice, void of usual spaciness, scolds me softly without an edge. You really have to learn to let go. She scans me calmly, almost calculatingly. <laughs> I wonder what I look like through her. <laughs> What's that? Damn, they're so green, it almost hurts. Ah, ah, green eyes! Green eyes, green eyes. There's a song about green eyes. I always was, was so enchanted by her eyes. Those mysterious, captivating eyes that always were too restless for their own good. But I was so in always I was also so intimidated by them. This is like staring at each other. Oh, she could give him a cheeky foot job, I suppose. Yeah, Rin is intimidating. On one or more level, and especially right now. She is frighteningly lucid, the goosebumps on her skin giving away that she is cold or scared too. Either way, I steal myself and step back to Rin, embracing her to feel her feel her in my arms again and to banish my doubts. The sight of her gentle, loving eyes seems to melt those doubts away like the last snow of winter. Oh, there's some boobies. She presses her head against my shoulder, seeking a place to rest herself in, leaning against me like I lean against her. Let go. Yes. You should forget about stuff like future and past. It's not like you can change those kinds of things. I wanted to say something to her, but I have lost my voice, so I just mumbled something unintelligible at her. You should just be with me now. Maybe she understood what I wanted to say, even if I didn't. Come here. I am here. Come closer. My entire body is thinking only in positives now, so I do, hugging her more tightly. Closer. I press my lower body against hers. She tenses a little, just a little. Closer. <laughs> it's like, I literally can't get closer. I, will, I would literally be... Oh my god! Oh! <laughs> oh my god! Her final plead is more like a prayer. There's only one way to be any closer than this. I reach down between us and guide myself, sinking myself into her. Every muscle in Rin's body stiffens at the same time. She doesn't say anything or wince, so I push deeper, eventually moving out. And again, and she moves with me. Our movements melt together into one continuing string of back and forth, in and out. All sensations become sharper, amplified tenfold. My brain gives gave up interpreting all these interpreting interpreting all these all this stimulation ages ago. And now I am left with no choice but to feel all of this with my entire body. It's like that for Rin too. I know it. I can see it. I can feel it. 
She breathes sharply in and out, losing all composure in grace. Breathes warmly against my shoulder. I'm gonna eat some cake for a minute. Mm. 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 Forget sex, I've got co I've got cake and chocolate combined. Mid-sex mm. 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 cake. Between those fragile breasts, she sometimes kisses me tenderly, gently, as if she was unsure how to do it properly. But there is no hesitation. Desperately clinging to me, drawing me closer so that I can fill all of her, she moves against me, around me so that it's hard to say where I stop and she begins. <laughs> we are now Hisran. Hisrin. We take it slowly, excruciatingly slowly, as if we had all the time in the world, even though we'd only have this, mo this moment and nothing beyond that. That feeling is... Wait. Wait. I stop moving, slightly alarmed. Maybe it hurts, or... She looks at me in a way that I can't really begin to interpret. Is this it? Huh? <laughs> is this it? Oh, well, that makes me feel great. That's what that's what any guy wants to hear. Is that it? Uh, huh? You said I don't have to be alone. Her eyes are full of an innocent, fuzzy-headed confusion that makes me chuckle a little and pet the back of her head. Yeah, this is what I meant. That you have someone you can come to when you get soaked in a rain. It means you are not alone. Is this, if there is such a person for you. She answers with a kiss, reminding me that we have stopped moving for no real reason. So we start from the top. <laughs> Starting on from the top. Ha, da, 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 I am a sailor of the sea. Almost at the same time, each mirroring the rhythm of the other. I move faster. Faster in and out of her. My sweat mixing of her. Ew, gross. Glistening on our shared skin like diamonds and pearls. She moves faster, grinding herself against me in the throes of her of our desire. The intoxicating scent of her lust, the mind-blanking feeling that connects our bodies. The sense of all rational thought draining from my mind. All those burn my consciousness just like the compelling feeling in my body burns my instincts. Those feelings grow, Rin makes no signs of stopping. She curls her feet behind my lower back, forcing me to drive myself in inside her as deep as physically possible. <laughs> <laughs> Each millimeter sending waves through my spine. My mind blanks out, blacks out as the world erupts into a flash of bright white bright blindness. And he came. All over her. Titties and play face and chest. Present. It's that song. Present is a fleeting and vague concept at best. Movement between the past and the future? Doesn't well I've never heard this before. It doesn't really mean anything. Thinking too much about things that doesn't that don't make sense is a waste of time. That's why living through the present is always the best option. Besides, for us who can't foresee the future and who forget the past too easily, present is really the only proof of our existence. Even though existence will go on, even if you forget about it for a while. It's good to see the day, at least every once in a while. That way, you can confirm that you are, in fact, alive. Hmm. I'm pretty sure the girl who was standing there half naked staring out the window of my room has a much better grasp of present than I do. That was an interesting little thing. As for me, well, right now I'm somewhat confused by my present state. Since I should try to locate my shirt and not stare at Rin's butt. But, <laughs> she's got a butt, 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 butt. I could actually have probably split this into two episodes. That's really fucking annoying. I might do that. But, hey Rin, you got a nice butt. <laughs> but, but, but. But I just can't stop looking at her. She is so close to the glass that her nose is probably going to leave a mark. At least her breathing does when it condenses on the rain-cooled window glass before quickly disappearing again. My shuffling around to get dressed doesn't rouse Rin from her contemplation, which is fine, really. I don't mind the silences as much as I used to. Only after I'm almost finished with buttoning up my shirt does Rin say something, still without turning to look at me. Let's go somewhere. Where? I can only assume she's inviting me and not the windowsill, but it's a fair guess. <laughs> hey, window, let's go out. I know. What? Help me get dressed. 
I think today is the day. Come on, close. <laughs> Come on, close. Close, close. What an impatient tone. I crouched down to pick up her bra from the floor where it had fallen, discarded in the haste of undressing and forgotten there. Hanging it from between my fingers like a dead fish, the same hesitation that grasped me when I was undressing Rin is creeping inside my head again. Is intimacy really something that is difficult for me to handle? Yes. You're a weirdo. You're a weirdo. Come on. You just got it off just fine. This is the same, but the other way around. It's like talking backwards. You say... You say sits to Smith. Seems hard, but it's easy. Perplexed by her sudden and prodigious display of mental process processing cap capacity, I forget to attempt reversing her gibberish back. I'm pretty sure I couldn't switch to talking backwards that fluidly, even with some practice. It's pretty good, to be fair, <laughs> yeah. Um, could you repeat that? You say it's, it's up just me. Got it. Fine, I'll, I'll give it a try. Rim was right. The locking mechanism is simple enough, and I get the little plastic hooks right on the third attempt. There. Now you have to adjust it. What? Please stop that. I don't speak back with ease. She shakes her head as if needing to banish the backwards way of thinking of a physical gesture. I know a few people who could benefit from that kind of ability. I got stuck. Now you have to adjust it. Adjust? That's what I said. No, I asked what you meant. You know, so they are fine. They are fine. Oh, fine, you say. Hmm. As I have no idea what her breasts are supposed to be fine, I end up fumbling around her chest for a good while, not really getting anywhere. It's like, well, this one's a bit lopsided. There we go. Not that I would complain, but Rin does. Emmy is better than you at this. Her impatient tone ticks me off, even though I can't really disagree. Rin suddenly seems to be in an awful hurry. Yeah, well, excuse me, could that be because she is a girl and can actually relate? I don't think so. She has just about as much chest as you do. <laughs> True. With her bra and breasts eventually fine, as they should, the rest of her clothes are considerably easier to put on. Rin launches towards the door, even though her shirt is still not buttoned up all the way yet. Left with little choice, I run after her. As soon as I realize we are heading for the side entrance leading to the forest, I think I know where Rin wanted to go, although I couldn't say why she wanted to go there. Then again, I really, I can't really assume my guess is to be anywhere near correct when Rin isn't concerned. Not even for a quite generous definition of correct. The forest behind the walls smells of rain. The last raindrops are still dripping from the wet undergrowth into the earth, despite the rain being gone for a while. For a, for a while already. We stroll al along with an unhurried pace that Rin sets, giving me time to take in the calming atmosphere. I think I can hear Rin saying hello to at least three different trees while she walks past them. Hello, hello! But I ignore it, just like the trees do. She leads me to the narrow side path leading up to the hilltops, as I guessed. I peek through the canopy, trying to find a rainbow. There doesn't seem to be one. It's perfect weather for rainbows. The sun is shining low when the rain has passed not too long ago. Well, whatever. I lower my eyes from the tree tops, tree tops, the tree tops, to see the gaunt back of the girl who is climbing up the hill slowly without losing her balance. A few steps ahead of me on the path, but still within my reach. I don't think I can ever reach a rainbow, but reaching Rin seems less impossible than it used to seem. The clear sky greeting us from above the meadow clearing seems vast and beautiful. A strong wind is herding the rain clouds away from the town, to the other side of the mountains in the distance. The sight is pretty, but a speck of white flies past the edge of my peripheral vision. But when I turn to look, it's already gone. Another follows, then a third. Before I realize it, dozens of almost invisible small tufts of white are flying all around us. Oh, this is why she wanted to get there. I need to hurry. Look, the flowers. Ah, I see it now. The sea of dandelions that covered the hilltop on our last visit has changed over the days. Where, where they were once bright yellow before, there is now fluffy white. Some of the flowers have already shed, this is where it's going to end, shed their seeds. But many are still waiting for a suitable gust of wind. Today those gusts are not in short demand. Every now and then they shake the grass thoroughly. And suddenly the air is thick with dandelion seeds. 
One by one, the seeds separate from the flower heads and are lifted away. A commonplace event, but one that seems to fascinate Rin for some reason. She's turning her head from side to side, marvelling at the change happening all around her as the seeds fly away. I watch them too, following the white tufts floating of the wind towards the horizon, and imagine that I can see them even after they disappear from my sight. Hisao? What is it? Do you love me? I snap to attention to meet her suddenly very serious face. There's not only looking at the flowers anymore. What a tough question. Ask just like that, out of the blue. Still, her bluntness compels me to answer rapidly. I don't know. Maybe I do. Maybe too rapidly. What does that mean? I don't know. You do know. You said you love her. Rin sighs, perhaps unhappy with my wishy-washy answer. I would be too. Me neither. I don't think I know much about love. It's fine, isn't it? How should I know? The shrug of her shoulders seemed to say, hesitating to give a firmer answer. You could have just said, I think I do. I think I do. <laughs> Pretty sure I do. She says silent for a, only. She stays silent for only a second too long. But even the second isn't long enough for me to think ahead. I love you. Ah. Oh. Those three words freeze in me in place like a rabbit staring into headlights. But I'm not a rabbit. I'm just staring into Rin's eyes. That seemed fair. That seemed far, far too impassive for what she just let out of her mouth. Rin looks pretty serious, though. And does she stick to her tongue, frowns a little, and confuses me even more than her words did. Why does she look so mildly unhappy? Was it a confession of her deepest feelings? A test to see how I would react? A test to see how she would she would react? It tastes weird. Tastes? Yeah, so weird. She laughs, maybe nervously, or so I want to think, but stops midway when she notices how strange it sounds. Like, I don't know what... I don't think there is a word for this. Rin keeps on talking, as though there was no meaning behind her words, steady and careless words dropping from the same tongue that form the more important ones. A word for, uh... Except... It's like... She can't... Hmm. Find the words. Hmm. Rin just stares at me, stumbling with her, with her, with her words, as if her brain suddenly ground to a halt. She looks awfully confused, much like how I feel right now as I wait for her to explain. But she doesn't. She blinks a few times, the flutter of her long lashes catching my fancy because she looks like she's petrified otherwise. Till I realize what they were fighting against. <clears throat> it's those wide, weird tears again. Not associated with sadness or happiness, not pitiful so sobering, nor, nor laughter of joy. Just tears. Spontaneously and without a warning, like that one time in her classroom. Ah. Just a few of them, not enough to make a fuss about, so Rin doesn't make a move to hide them, even after noticing. Rin cries, looking like she has no idea why, and somehow a great uneasiness grows in my chest when I look into her watery eyes that stare right back at me. It petrifies me too, the shock of her incomprehensibility of this situation. I just... I don't know what is happening anymore. Rin? What's wrong? I... She shakes her head in confusion, stumbling to get the words out of her mouth. Sorry. Sorry. I might be a little afraid of you. The words are muttered slowly, with a small voice that is as disbelieving of what it's saying as I am. What? Why? I don't know. Saying that just made me feel that. People cry when they are afraid, right? See? I can do it too. She's averting her gaze now, deliberately not looking at me. It bewilders me, at least, as much as what I, she is saying. I... So I... Sometimes with you, want to run away so badly, but I can't move. It's like my legs turn into lemon panna cotta pudding. <laughs> what the fuck? And my heart feels like it's going to explode. And She slumps her shoulders melancholically. Has a thing like this ever happened to you? I remember the laden sky above the frozen forest and the sound of the leafless branches clacking against each other. It's like a memory from another life. Yeah, once. My heart hit a lot back then too. But I thought that thing, your thing was not contagious. I shake my head and a tiny, slightly forced smile rises on my lips. The other ailment of my heart could very well be contagious, and I wouldn't care a bit. What are you afraid of? I never thought I was scary. 
Rin shakes her head desperately, as if knowing that the tangle inside her mind won't be undone with just that. You make me feel that I should be someone else than me. It's a scary thing. It happens when you are being nice to me, like yesterday. I never know what to do at times like that. It's hard. Her voice is barely audible. A whispered admission of something that is too embarrassing to even think, not to mention to say aloud. Rin has never been one of to be embarrassed, so she does utter it aloud, only as timidly as it's by instinct. But I want to do something. But I don't know if this me can. For a moment, we just stare at each other, as if waiting for the other to say something. You're so stupid. Rin's lips taste salty and scared against mine. As I grasp her into an embrace, I feel my heart ch thumping in my chest painfully. She's gonna die. Even though I am glad she can say things like that. It makes me sad. They make me sad after all. Rin's spirit, her passion, her strength. All those things that I hold dear are the ones I don't want to change. How should I treat them? Where are they headed to? Is that the future irrevocably different from mine? That anxiety will never lose its grip on my heart, but I think I could learn to live with it. Slowly, the pain in my heart dies out, and it settles into the same rhythm as Rin's. We listen to that for some time. Yeah. After our lips break apart, it takes a while for either one of us to realise that we can say something now. See? You really are a kind person, even when you are not. It's the most scariest thing ever. I think, I think that all I was ever afraid of is your kindness. Hmm. Is that bad? Even if you are afraid? She thinks about this for a while, furrowing her brow as though this is some kind of hard math problem. No, I'm alright with it. If it's fine, if it, it's fine if it's you. <laughs> like a weight lifted from my chest, her words elate my heart, filling it with, I don't know, happiness? What else could it be? This time my smile is genuine. Rin steps back, still smiling gently at me like I do at her. Say, say you love her. Say it. Say it. Say it. While she wipes her face on her shoulders, I pick up a round, plump, plump dandelion clock and it brings it to my pursed lips. <sighs> they spread out into the wind that picks them in to carry them to a new home. To think only a shoe thought a shoe thought weeks ago. Why do I keep doing that? A few short weeks ago, they were so different. This is change. Hey, so the flowers became what they were meant to become, like you said the last time. What about you? Did you become a true artist, or did you not? Because you ran away. She pauses for a while to ponder my question, and shrugs her shoulders. It almost makes me laugh. The carefree easiness of her gesture is a lovely thing. A sign of how Rin can, truly and really, without any restraints whatsoever, shed the entire weight of the world from her shoulders, should she will so. She is, in every possible and probably a few impossible ways, free. And I think I might love her for that. I don't think it matters. Let's just watch the clouds for today. Here we go, here's the end. She takes five steps to climb on a large rock, so she can rise as high as, po as, as it's possible. Here and takes a stand on tiptoes. When you reach for the clouds, every inch counts. Sure, let's watch the clouds. It's good to do something you really want to do, every now and then. Yeah, you are probably right. I glance upwards at the blue sky opening high above us. It's a deep, cerulean vastness that spreads to fill my entire field of vision and beyond. Yet Rin stays on her rock, peering at the distant horizon where the rain clouds are drifting further away from us. I have decided something. That dreaming voice of hers, spoken to the wind that carries it to my ears, is lacking resolve in tone, but it's full of, but it's full of it in meaning. It's all right to be me after all. It's all right. Her decisions always seem to be pretty far out. Well, I suppose that is an important realization. Coming to terms with oneself, accepting yourself, being fine with what you are. A simple resolution of heart that for some people is over well, overbearingly hard to do, if not impossible. That grass is stuck in the air, it's fucking weird. All that stuff is moving and the grass is <laughs> stuck in the, in, the, in, the, in the air. I do realize well enough that I might also be one of those people. Rin too. 
Maybe we are not that different after all. Maybe to accept someone else. Accept. To sex someone else. Accept. I'm gonna accept you. To make, accept and sex you. To accept someone else, you must find first accept yourself. Maybe that is necessary step which we don't take until now. Looking at her standing on that rock, I believe she can find whatever she is looking for. And so can I. The wind catches her hair and clothes, and Rin spreads her short arms into, into an embrace. It is so very t tiny, but as wide as she can ever do. <laughs> for a moment, it looks like she herself might take flight. And I have to hold myself back to not reach for her shoulders, to not drag her back to me. But this picture is something I can only watch. It is something for me to remember. Rin's sleeves are flapping freely in the wind, her hair wildly tossed by it, her skin touched by the setting sun. Her sleek form that I've come to adore is quivering in the cool wind that carries the small white specks past her, each a beginning of a new flower. All that is engraved inside my heart. Like those tiny seeds scattered into the wind, I'm sure that Rin too can take her place in this world without the need to create her own inside of it. Maybe she believes it too. And standing as close to the heaven as possible, she is giving the world a big hug. To me, it seems like the entire world really could fit there between those small arms of hers, inside of her all-encompassing embrace. Her sow? Her sow? She looks at me in the same way she calls my name, carelessly over her shoulder, with a strange happiness in her voice and her eyes. I gaze into those mysterious dark eyes that are curiously twinkling from below her auburn hair. Although I'm too far from her to see it, I'm sure they are reflecting my image. What is it? What's the word for when it feels inside your heart that everything in the world is alright? Huh. Oh. That's a nice ending. I like that. See, that had like a... There was an uncertainty there, but it kind of felt like they accepted each other. That was a good ending. I like that. That was a good path, that was. I don't know what people say. Yeah, I think Rangers is a really good path. It's very different. But, uh, yeah, that, that was, uh... My looks a lot younger in that concept photo. That was, uh, yeah, that, I like that. I like the ending there. It, it, that was that was a happy ending. There was a slight tinge of uncertainty where, like, maybe... What the future holds for them. But... Definitely... Yeah, you know, I had a good ending. Shizuneza is still the worst fucking ending ever. I thought it was going to end with them sort of, like, uncertainly sort of, like, deciding that they might not be best, but they kind of want to spend t t still together. I think that was it. Not, they may not be the best for each other, but they probably will spend as much time as they can before they're drawn apart from each other. I think that's kind of what I get from it. That's really nice. There you go, guys. I guess that's that. So, that is the end of Rin's Good Path. Um, next time, we will be doing Rin's Neutral and Bad Ending. Uh, bad Ending first, and then we'll do Neutral. So, to get the neutral, the Bad Ending, we have to go all the way back to Act 3. Uh, we made the choice. Um, isn't like you to hesitate like this. Uh, we'll say, I think it would be a big hit uh, instead. I think I saved back there. So we'll do that, and then we pick another choice later on. And, um, yeah. That'll be, uh, that'll give us two scenes that we were missing. And then we'll do Act 4 as the final choice. We'll do the Act 4 and make our final choice as, uh, but aren't you happy people are interested in your paintings? And that'll be the, uh, neutral ending. That gives us that's that's actually quite a long one, so that actually might take more than one episode. But thank you for watching, guys. Hope you enjoyed this. I'm gonna split this into two because it's it's too long. Plus, it gives me more time because I'm doing. I did most of this to cover the fact that I'm probably gonna be kind of distracted with the house moving and stuff. So hopefully, by the time this is done, it should all be um, over. Actually, this will be eight days later now. You should be watching this. I did all this in one night, so this should be about eight episodes. So, yeah, yeah, about a week and a, just a week and a day. Um, so hopefully, I should be in the house by then. Yeah. 
Okay. Thank you for watching, guys. I have been Milby. This has been Carol Shadow. This is the end of Rin's route, but we are far from done. We still have a little bit more left to do with Rin. And then after that, we have our whole other path. The one that loads of people have been waiting for. Uh, the the blind beauty, the blind blonde beautiful bombshell that is Lily, and um, yeah, and then we have a special secret afterwards, the most the most romantic ending of all. <laughs> but until then, guys, thank you for watching. I've been Milby. This has been Rin's good path on Cadu showed you. I really hope you enjoyed yourselves. I did. I I, I started off kind of distract distant from the story of Rin, but. I definitely got into it at the end. And I liked the ending. It was really happy. It made me smile. Uh, like I said, I like happy endings. I'm a sucker for happy endings. So, thank you for watching, guys. I have been Milby. This has been Kadawa Shoujo. I hope I will see you again next time.